Hey guys, welcome back or to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing our Load Lifter 7500XL airlift bags uh, on our Ram 2500. Kit number is 57589. Um, we got this kit so that we could level out the truck because when we have a fifth wheel on it, it is squatting pretty bad. Um, so we're going to try to correct that issue and get it more leveled out so that it's redistributing the weight uh, more appropriately. This kit is designed to go in place of your factory bump stops and on a Ram truck that has the coil spring rear end. Alright guys, so we got everything laid out on this load lifter 7500XL kit. Um, we've got the bottom plates. You've got the, I believe they call these the anti-roll uh, plates for top and bottom. <clears throat> um, you've got both sides, uh, upper plates here that are going to mount to the bags. And then this is what's going to hold them in place to the plates that go on the truck in place of the bump stops. So these are gonna be, these are laid out, I uh, believe this is passenger side, driver side. They're mirrored images of each other uh, according to the directions. So that's kind of how we got them laid out. We're gonna go ahead and assemble these on the bench and then we'll pull the truck in and do everything we need to do uh, in regards to actually installing them. Uh, in the instructions, it does say to remove the the wheels on the rear axle <clears throat> and I think that'll aid us in uh, actually getting some more clearance to drop the axle further down to give us more room uh, to insert the bags between the axle and the frame. All right so as you can see per the instructions here you've got the <clears throat> upper plates here that um, are going to actually mount in place of the uh, jounce bumpers on the truck. So you're gonna remove the jounce bumpers and then take these plates. This one should be passenger side and this one should be driver side. So they're exactly mirror images of each other. So we got those laid out. <clears throat> now we're gonna go ahead and attach. So we got these plates, but again, these are the same thing. So you've got mirror images of each other, driver side, passenger side. Um, we're gonna go ahead and assemble all this stuff and then put it up on the truck. All right, so it basically says uh, to set each roll plate over the top of each air spring um, <clears throat> so that your where your air fitting is, it goes through the large hole. Then you're gonna take <clears throat> these plates like so, and you're gonna set them over the top. But first, you wanna make sure that you take the carriage bolt and you stick it up in here. Otherwise, I don't know if you're actually going to get it on. Because it's going to sit up in there. All right, next you're going to take <clears throat> these bolts that are in 33139 bag. There's a couple of them. And you're going to secure the top of these. So you're, you'll secure the roll plate and this mounting plate with these same bolts. You can get these up in there even after the fact, but it is a little bit difficult. It's not super easy to do. 
So it does tell you in the instructions to put both of these um, carriage bolts up in there, but you don't have to. You should be able to get them without doing it. Um, I would do the ones obviously over the uh, roll plates. So it says not to torque these bolts more than 20 foot pounds. These are both uh, 14 millimeter on both sides, and they want you to torque them to 31 foot pounds. All right, now your carriage bolts here are going to go through. We're going to set the roll plate over each one of these or i'm sorry we're going to set this plate over each roll plate the large washer uh, it does say that the large washer needs to be positioned on the lower bracket so that it is on the same side as of the assembly as the air fittings um, so that's going to be one guide for you there bolts should be the same spec. Uh, we're going to do these at 15 foot pounds. It just says not to over torque um, or to torque past 20 foot pounds. Now that we got all this uh, put together uh, correctly, we can now start to mount these on the truck. So the next thing will be attaching the assemblies to the frame uh, as part of the instructions. There's some little tidbits that we want to make sure that we cover in their instructions so that we get it right the first time. All right guys, so we got the uh, truck pulled in. We're gonna go ahead and remove the factory bump stops. It's kind of dark, so let me see if I can get some light on here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the factory bump stops. All right, so we got the wheels um, loose. We're about to take them off. This is just gonna aid us in being able to get in there and um, be able to properly get to all the fasteners that we need to uh, tighten, torque, uh, any of that stuff. It's just gonna make it easier in general. Um, and then I just remembered we got some rock lights on this truck, so we'll go ahead and light those up so we can light the area that we're working. And you guys can kind of see, this is the whole reason why we um, put the rock lights on but we did it more so for if we were on the road and we had something that we needed to look at. So 
lights it up a little bit better so you can actually see. So next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove these bump stops or the jounce bumps is what they call them, I believe. And uh, there's just two screws or two bolts up here. You remove those and then we're gonna start lowering this axle down so we can give us uh, some clearance. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we've got the jounce bumps off, or the bump stops. So now we're gonna take these uh, button head screws that they supply. They're a little bit longer ones. You should have four of them. It doesn't matter what plate you use because they're both cut exactly the same. So these holes are exactly the same. So you're just gonna flip one over for the other side. So this is gonna go just like so. And then you're gonna put these back up in there to secure the plate in place through these holes here. There's a slotted hole and there's an actual, just a regular hole. Uh, these are gonna get torqued to 30 foot pounds. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna hang this uh, driver's side airbag. And the one thing that it does say is to make sure that this um, carriage bolt goes in between or behind, uh, rather behind the brake line that it shows here. So I'll show you that up underneath the truck. All right, so the brake line they're talking about is this one right here. The, U, the carriage bolt needs to go up behind it here. Let's see if we can get this in here now. So these are going to go in here. And it's important to note that this washer needs to go in front of um, the, the mount or the where the bump stop actually contacts the axle. I think we snug that one up as best as we can. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and stick this up under here. Put our uh, nuts on here to hold it in place. We'll get this so it's sitting kind of on the axle. get torqued to 10 foot-pounds. All right guys, at this point, they want you to install the wheels and ensure that you have at least a half of an inch clearance between the plates 
and the edge of the tire. So we've had, we have plenty of room. So it's just one thing to check on your application. All right guys, at this point, we need to decide where we're gonna run this airline to. So there's a couple different options that you can do when it comes to running your airline. So they have a diagram that shows you putting it somewhere up in here. If you drill through the plastic and then route it up here on both sides, you can do that. However, you're cutting yourself short with some airlines. So if you ever do um, install a onboard air compressor or something like that, that can control this like their airlift one, um, you're gonna have to replace all this line uh, regardless because you're, you're only gonna have a short amount. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna run it back along the frame here up into there and then around the spare tire and then the perfect spot to put it go here if you go in this location there's nothing really back here and you can get to it with a wrench to secure um, the the chuck that's that's down here on the um, on the end of this all right so that's where we're gonna go the other option that guys do is they go and put it up in here. This is a little more difficult for us to get to right now. Um, we'd have to take these bolts loose, probably drill a hole. I'm not gonna mess with that tonight. So our easiest option is at the back. All right guys, so the one thing it does say is to choose a location, um, drill a 5 16 or eight millimeter hole in the location that you want it. Uh, you wanna cut the line in uh, airline in half Make a clean square cut with a razor blade or hose cutter. Do not use scissors or wire cutters. So that's super important so that you don't get some uh, jagged edges because this is just push lock. Uh, All right, now we'll go ahead and uh, route these to the bags, zip tie them up, and then we'll be done. All right, so the way that we, that we routed this is we pointed these quick connects towards the rear. We're gonna plug these in. All right, we got it run up here to the back. This direction, tighten this up. If you can see that. See it or not. All right, so that's where it comes into the license plate. Then we did the exact same thing on the other side. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and uh, throw the wheels back on, button this all back up, and then we'll go ahead and give you guys a couple shots of these um, airing up and all that so you can see uh, what they look like uh, and how much travel we actually get out of these. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and measure this really quick. So right now, we're right at about 44 inches on this side. So we'll just see what it'll lift to. All right, so right now, we're sitting at about 46. So 46 inches, so we got about four inches of lift off of this so far with no weight on the rear end at all. I hope you guys found this video helpful and not only on the install, but in making your decision whether you wanna go with some airlift helper spring, air springs, if you will. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and the bell notification so that you get notified when we upload new content. Until next time, thanks for watching.